Okay, so Simon Pegg stirring the pot this week. Uh, he was doing a podcast, the Adam Buxton podcast, and he had made a comment about uh, how when he walked out of the last Star Wars film, uh, The Last Jedi, I don't think he was feeling this about uh, Solo, uh, but his first uh, feeling that came over him, his overriding feeling was, I miss George Lucas and his involvement in the Star Wars franchise. And, um, you know, this is somebody, uh, and I, I was guilty of this too, you know, who I kind of really, you know, when, when I watched the prequel films, I was really disappointed in some some aspects of them. I mean, I was uh, happy Star Wars was back. Um, I remember walking out of The Phantom Menace, kind of going, scratching my head, like, what the hell did I just watch? I remember when um, I first heard Jar Jar Binks and, um, you know, moya, moya, misa, moza. And I was like, what? The I didn't understand what he said. I thought they should have subtitled him. Um, it was just, a, you know, and then what you realize is like as a filmmaker, George Lucas at that time, had, you know, had just adopted his second child. I think it was a, his son and uh, he was little and he was making movies at that time in his life, probably more geared towards like something his child could watch because movies in the end are personal to the director. And uh, so, you know, I know uh, Simon Pegg had kind of come down on uh, Jar Jar Binks and, and then, but then when you hear uh, Armand Best uh, talk about how he almost contemplated suicide because people were just all on him about the Jar Jar thing and it really screwed him up. And, uh, you know, and then he kind of, you know, Simon Pegg walked that stuff back. You know, it's the same thing. Same thing with me. A lot of Star Wars fans out there that, you know, say a lot of stuff and then walk it back later. You know, um, you find the things that you do like in some of these movies. Although I understand where Simon Pegg is coming from after coming out of The Last Jedi. It's just it just feels like George Lucas's involvement. You know, the fact that they kind of cut him out of everything. He, I mean, he, he did it. He sold Lucasfilm. He, I mean, he did it. Um and maybe he thought they would still come to him. But, the, you know, what you got to remember is like George Lucas wanted to retire. Uh, you know, he didn't want to make Star Wars films till he was 100 years old, if he lived that long. And, um, you know, he's got his wife and he's got, he's got all this stuff going on in his life. And he still has so much with Skywalker Sound and THX and all this other kind of stuff. You know, he's got so much going on in this museum that he's building in Chicago. And uh, so... Anyway, it, it is what it is, but uh, I understand where Simon Pegg's coming from. Uh, you know, when he probably had an amazing experience doing doing The Force Awakens with J.J. Abrams, they're friends, you know, they did the Star Trek series together, um, the reboot, and, you know, Simon Pegg is just really passionate as a Star Wars fan and a Star Trek fan. Um, and I think, you know, he probably knew, like, J.J. had a template for the next couple of films and had the, the treatments written and all that stuff. And to have it all thrown out, you know, the baby with the bathwater, I think it just kind of really rocked him uh, to see it on screen and to just kind of come out of that theater shaking his head going, you know, I miss George. You know, it's nice to see George Lucas on set of The Mandalorian visiting Jon Favreau on his birthday. Uh, he visited Ron Howard on Solo. Um, and so I feel like they realize they need to have the bearded man involved a little bit more, even if he's just coming to set to visit and take a look at things. Um, uh, so, you know, Simon Pegg, you know, I'm sure it was split down the middle uh, with the fan base. Like, oh, oh, man, what's he saying that for? You know, all the, you know, the, the people that like The Last Jedi and then the other people that, you know, didn't last like The Last Jedi like me probably agree with Simon Pegg and. But I do feel that like George, uh, you know, they should be picking his brain a little bit more after all. I mean, he created all this stuff 40 plus years ago and uh, uh, has been the driving force behind it. Um, and sure, other authors have gone off and done books and comic books and done everything. But, you know, Lucasfilm Story Group always was like involved. And, you know, I just don't know how much involvement they had or maybe a lot of those guys at Lucasfilm Story, the, the story guys, were scratching their head when, uh, you know, The Last Jedi was being written by uh, uh, Ryan Johnson. And I don't know, man, I, I feel like people didn't speak up enough. I mean, even uh, um, uh, Trevorrow, you know, who got let go of doing episode nine, you know, he wanted Luke Skywalker in his movie. And this was something that um, 
uh, he was adamant about, and they 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 said no because Ryan's killing him, and you can't have him. So he left. A lot of people thought, you know, everyone was, you know, oh, creative differences. He left. He was pit well. He wanted to have Luke Skywalker in his movie. Can't blame him. So anyway, um, you know, I just I understand where Simon Pegg and I, look. I think that Simon Pegg should voice his opinion. Um, you know, he's a director, he's a writer, he's a filmmaker, um, and he's in both the Star Wars universe and the Star Trek universe. And there's nothing wrong with him as just a personal fan uh, giving out his thoughts on, on you know, the lack of Lucas involvement in, in these storytellings that are going forward. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, it created a lot of buzz. A lot of people were talking about it. Simon Pegg on the Adam Buxton podcast. So um, if you like this video and you have some thoughts, comment, talk to me in the comments below. Uh, you can give a like, you could share this video, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you on the next video.